and then we did the brain on a toast. But I, I was sure you were roasting the eyes. There's four of them. So I ate three eyeballs. And I put the other eyeball. I tucked it into the brain, oh, which I wouldn't do to you because I respect you, whatever. Oh, <laughs> shit, <laughs> man. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Willie Colon, and he is. Oh, what's up, Willie? And this is Beats and Eats. We're on East 12th Street and First Ave at Ducks Eatery. We're gonna chop it up with Chef Horowitz. He's gonna get wacky. He's gonna get weird with Large. We also got Curtis Cook in the house. He's gonna be joining us. Large, did not make me go to the emergency room tonight. I would never do that to you. I'm gonna take care of you. I would never do anything to make you wind up like this gentleman right here. I'm be nervous. Just fine, my man. Let's go. Let's move forward. All right, everybody, now it's my time to hit the kitchen with chef, owner, proprietor, Chef Will Horowitz. We're about to beat it up, make a couple of very interesting dishes for our special guest, Curtis Cook, and my co-host and best friend, Willie Colon. <laughs> Willie, I, I promise I'm not gonna hurt you. The only thing I'm gonna tell you, it's a little bit of a tight kitchen, so you're gonna have to be patient with me. Um, but we're gonna <laughs> check out what Will is doing already and see what we can do. Well, what's up? Large, what's up, dude? How are you, man? Good to see you. I'm doing good. Thanks How are again you? For your right? I love dude, you. Dude, thank you. I'm going to slide by if that's all right. Let's do it. Jesus Christ. Well, that doesn't, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't work at all. <laughs> All right, what are we doing today, my man? All right, we got a few things planned for you today, but I knew you were coming, and I know what your favorite is, so we got a smoked goat neck smoked coming goat for that's you. My, that's my thing, man. <laughs> I've had it a couple times here before. So the original marinade, uh, then you smoke them, then you braise them with the yeah. marinade, so then the marinade goes down into the jus, and then the jus is part of the pan sauce that you finish it yeah. off with. And you can see kind of the gelatin yeah, there. Yeah, it does have a wiggle to it. So that's like all the marrow, all that smokiness wow, that coming is, together, dude, and it's bomb. Oh. Yeah, so, that, so that's <laughs> extremely delicious. And again, we'll cut it with some butter. Yeah. Um, Bing cherries that, we, that are dried. Yes. A little bit of Gruner, like uh, wine. And we're just gonna throw it on this pan. We're gonna have you help me if, if that's cool. I would love to help you. I'll stay out of your way if you want. I do have the chef's jacket. Exactly. I do have this thing going, so it'd be embarrassing if you didn't do it in a little bit. But yeah, so what are we gonna it's do better first? Better than me. You're damn right. <laughs> going to complain. He's going to complain when I put this in front of him. And you want to know why? Because Willie needs to be shown how to eat. And that's part <laughs> of the reason that I am doing this show with him. Smoked curry, goat's neck. Cherries are fantastic, by the way. Good, right? A little bit of cilantro over some jasmine rice. Can you rice. try the sauce? I, I, I'm about to try the yeah, sauce. I'm about to try the sauce. I'm going to eat the whole goddamn thing. <laughs> try something that would have tried again. You saw an opportunity and you, you took it. Can't be mad at that. What about you? You got permission from the old man to come back to reconcile some personal business. In the course, he let his emotions cloud his judgments, stole some merchandise that was in your possession that belonged to the company. Killed a cop. That's a violation. Q was held accountable, Q was gone. But let's talk about your role in all this. I'm extremely excited to have this man next to me. You may have seen him on Shutter Island, NBC's Manifest, uh, FX, Minds MC. He's been in the game for so long. Now he's playing somebody who I, I if I saw him on the street, I would just buy, I would just buy him a drink because his wardrobe <laughs> is extremely fly. He's playing a character by the name of Duda. 
Curtis Cook in the building. What's Yo, up, baby? What's up, I'm, baby? I'm so Love happy it. for you to be here, man. Thank you, man. You've, you've been in the game for so long. You studied overseas in London. I sure did. Uh, now, you, there's something with the London, because you were the first what? First African-American. Yes. Get a full ride. Full ride. Full ride, man. And, and how people. did that happen? Man, it was amazing. Um, I was doing musical theater and stuff um, growing up. And it was this organization that I was involved with called The Muse Machine. And this one year, toward my senior year, was at the end, and this woman who runs it, Susie Pisani, she came up to me, she was like, so darling, what are you gonna do after school? What are you gonna do? And I'm like, yeah, Susie, I'm going to the Navy. She's like, oh no, darling, your ass is not going to the Navy. Yeah. The principal of the school came to New York, Chicago, and LA every year um, to audition for students. Because she knew him, she flew, he flew to Dayton, and he auditioned me. And they went back and they talked, man, and they gave me a full wow. effing ride Such to um, Mount View School in, in London, England. You jumped on Broadway, mm -hmm. you used doing shows, Lion King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but w one thing that's not talked about with your story enough is you were a single father of three at the time. The struggle just to survive, and particularly in New York, is so real. You did that, made a name for yourself, and was a single father of three. I mean, Talk about perseverance. Man, when I tell you that, uh, whenever somebody reminds me of that, yeah. I get all chills inside because, to be totally honest, I don't know how I did it. Now you have a son mm -hmm. who's acting, Curtis Cook Jr., yeah. who I've seen some of his work, forget about it. The guy is special. And then I think a large part of it is that, to what we talked about, he was able to see your perseverance, so he gets it at an early the age. You know I agree. I, mean? I want to talk about The Shy mm -hmm. uh, once again on Showtime. It's an original series. This is season two. You're season the two. new face. Tell the people who Duda is Whoa. on the show. Man, Duda is a bad motherfucker. <laughs> right, he is. And you know, when the shit was brought and put in front of him, man, it was one of those things that was too good to be true. Really? Because the way that um, Ayana Floyd Davis was the executive producer um, on the show, as well as, of course, Alina Waithe, who's yes. the creator. Shout executive out to producer. Alina. Yeah, both of them, man, incredible women, yeah. incredible black yes. women. I think they went out and they found people who can fucking act and don't look like stars. It's called talent. And so it brings you in even closer. So now you're like really looking at the story and they're like real people. I know Common had a hand in the show, mm -hmm. right? And this is Beats and Eats and we highlight food uh -uh. and music. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who want to know, who do you listen to? Who do uh -oh. you like? See, I'm old, dude. <laughs> so this dude, I'm, the guy I mentioned, a lot of people may not even know him. I mean, he's he's new, he's young, actually. He's not even that old. Gregory Porter. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm fucking with me. No, I'm dead. He, he has a song called Lionheart. Yes, right? yeah, Lions. Uh -huh. I'm serious. That's yes, one of my yes, favorite yes. songs. And he wears the cowl yeah, over his head. Yeah, I don't understand the get up, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I like yeah, he yeah. sing his tail off. I, I'm starting to listen to, like, you're going to laugh at me. Like, I started listening to J. Cole, man. Yeah. And, like, he's saying some real shit. Nobody's going to that. What was that group? Um, Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse, yeah, with you know, uh, Joe Budden. Joe Budden and, and all of them, yeah, yeah. Stuff. So I would listen to a lot of those dudes and whatever for a minute, but. For the people, mm. tell them where else you can they find you if you got anything else going on. The shot just got picked up for season three. Wow, Let, there let's, you go. Let's have everybody make sure Duda comes back season three. Say where, that. Can, where can they find you on social media? Curtis Cook, C U R T I S S C O O K, all across the board. Once again, please for the people, Curtis Cook, my brother. Love, love, you. love, love. love, love. love. All right, we're back in Harry and Ida's, Will's other spot, best pastrami in New York City. This is where Will does most of his fermenting, this is where Will does most of his smoking, and it's where Will and I are gonna do all of our killing. We got the live eel here, and since it's a live eel and we can't serve it live, we have to make it a dead eel. What's the process? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out, and this is, it's a little bit brutal, I'm not gonna lie. We're gonna cover it in salt, and that's actually going to cut it off of oxygen really, really quickly. So you're gonna kill it like you would kill a slug? Yeah, it hopefully it doesn't melt, but yeah. Okay. That's the idea. So we're going right from here right to here, Yeah, correct? that's it. No big yeah. deal. Oh, there he is. No. Fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of this at all. The shift of its organs inside and stuff, I, I kind of felt it was gonna come alive at any second. So it was somewhat terrifying. And I'm a natural coward, so it didn't play well into that. Where's that, Fuck, that, this that is, nice This is orange. weird. I definitely wanna hold up for a second. Yeah, hold that thing way up. Is our eel, fresh out of the Gowanus, going into our bucket, and this is this eel's last day. All right, so let's salt him while he's still asleep, and we'll pray to the eel gods it's a quick death. This eel has been properly assaulted. <laughs> uh, what's up? So while we're waiting for this guy to die, give me a little backstory on Will Horowitz. Yeah, so um, I originally grew up here in New York, my grandparents on one side had like an old school Jewish delicatessen. So they were pickling tongues and corned beef and stuff on the fire escape. 
all up in the Bronx and in Harlem. And then my grandparents on the other side were in Orient, Long Island, which is like an old school fishing village. My grandfather uh, was a predominantly like a fisherman later in his life. Right. And then my grandmother, a French trained chef. For me, a lot of these traditions, they're, they're amazing because at the end of the day, they fucking taste great. Yes. But for me, I'm also trying to really tell a story about my family, where I'm from, this area, and like a lot of these old school traditions and foods. Right. I think we're good. Think we're good? We try it. So we might go right into the water. You've done this before, right? No, no, yeah, not since summer camp. <laughs> Thank God Willie's not here. He'd be like, wow, it's so small. <laughs> oh, look at it. You see that? If this would have happened while we were trying to fly it, it would have been fucking impossible. Yeah. And I wouldn't have stayed. I would have been <laughs> fucking out of here. All right, so we're going right into the brine. So water, salt, sugar, fish sauce, soy, brown sugar? Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so that's the first time I ever broke down an eel or watched an eel be broken down. I, I, I helped a little bit. There was some experience. This thing here is still freaking me out. I felt like the night's watch. I was keeping a watch fly on the goddamn thing. I was ready for it to jump and have that, that electromagnetic uh, whatever impulse, which it did once we removed the spine and all the, uh, the vital organs. So I was, again, I was moderately terrified, a little bit intrigued. I have a small erection, which uh, I'm not embarrassed to say I have. We're going to put this in for about a day and a half. Day and a half. And we have one in there. we're going to then hit our cold smokers and slowly bring it up to a hot smoke. And the entire time, we're going to just start basting it with that same dark maple. Oh, OK. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. OK. And then when this thing comes out, it'll come out as a whole filet. And then we'll figure out how we're going to finish it. Okay. Chef, that was a fantastic job. All right, so Chef, we have that beautiful eel at the point where it's ready for service. If you just take us in now, there's a finish line. I'm looking at the finish line. Yep. Just take us across the finish line now. Absolutely, so you've already seen everything else for the eel, killing it, the whole deal. And now all we gotta do is really plate it up and it's so simple because we've already done all the hard work. All right, so now we have a simple cucumber salad with Persian cucumbers, fresh mint, maple, garlic oil, and lime juice that goes right into the bowl. Again, another perfect dish. All right, guys, so we're back here in Duck's Eatery, Beats and Eats, so we're gonna move on to the pick your poison appetizer portion. As you guys know, these two idiots have spent time getting to know each other, becoming best friends, while I was sweating my ass off in the kitchen, <laughs> making them dishes that they like, maybe don't like, I really just don't give a fuck. I'm picking the poison today. Uh, Curtis, we want them to smoke the eel for you. Smoked eel caught fresh off the Ebony <laughs> DP. <laughs> this, deal, this eel grew up in the Gowanus Canal in Brooklyn. <laughs> and met its demise right over there on Avenue D. I killed it myself. We were down in the smokehouse. They have a smokehouse just about a block away, Harry and Ida's. Prepared very simply with a smoke, a salad on the side. Persian. Man, I ain't eating this shit. You are. <laughs> Persian cucumber, lime juice, a little bit of maple syrup, a little bit of mint. You're going to go at it. Willie, you're doing the smoked goat's neck. <laughs> Why the neck, yes, Large? You Why are the you're doing the neck? So you can see the vertebrae right here, oh. and it comes out. Very, very easy, right? Let me be honest with you. Large is starting to wear me to fuck in. But one of the things that happens in this show is that I think our guests and Willie need to be, they need to act more like adults, right? I mean, I'm not gonna put anything in front of them that's illegal or something that's gonna get them sick. And I think if they have more of an open mind when this stuff comes out, it's gonna make the experience better for all of us. So what we do here is we marinated, taken out, smoked, then braised, finish it off in a pan with a shitload of butter. So we're gonna have some mouthfeel, a couple of sour cherries, a little sour big cherries, a little sweetness back to it. Topped off with some cilantro, jasmine rice that's cooked with duck stock. I know for a fact. I know for a that fact. That on a goat, yes. there's other parts that are edible. <laughs> right. and so, the neck ah. is the one. This is such an edible piece of meat. Is this Since really eel though? That's eel. So yeah, so this is the tail and that's the head. We leave the skin on, you're not gonna eat the skin, but when you smoke it, obviously with the skin still on, we get a certain amount of fat and a certain amount of it flavor. It like a Gucci loaf of saute. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, this little bit of the acid Why from Why she gotta this, be looking at me that good? looking right at you. It's like, okay. Curtis, I'm a big fan, why are you doing this? <laughs> this is the acid that's gonna cut through some of the fat of the fish. Oh, wow. Gentlemen, mm. shut up mm. and enjoy. Oh, oh man. man. See, that, that is gorgeous. So cut, oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So who you want to eat first? Curtis, so I'd like you to try it first. Put the fish out on your plate, Kirk. I'm not putting the fish out on my plate. <laughs> How was it honestly? You know, it wasn't bad. Right. It kind of had like a chalky texture. Like, 
A little bit of mean smoked, yeah. But you've had eel before in Japanese restaurants. No. Oh, no. yeah. You've had it. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> oh, we've had a lot of eel before. It taste the same. You learn. That's traditionally. So smoked eel is something that it's a little bit more old school than the, the, the Japanese things that you've had. Man, I, don't, I don't trust you, man. Yeah. I don't trust you, man. Trust There's too many facts. Eat. You're talking too much. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not, I would never do that to you. Can I eat now? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would tear into that if I was yeah. you, Willie, and tell me exactly how you feel as soon as you feel. Delicious, it's fatty, I love the rice. It has um, raisins. Uh, yeah, it has some uh, uh, Bing cherries. Yeah, well I like that. Are y'all gonna have y'all cholesterol checked after you <laughs> So now, I will ask you, at the end of the Pick Your Poison round, as I so often do, sometimes you hate it, sometimes you love it. Would, if somebody put this on a plate in front of you, at a restaurant, sort of what I just did, would you eat it and enjoy it? The answer is yes. Oh. You talking about me? You, <laughs> yeah, you. I was fucking his neck up. And Curtis, I will ask you. Yeah. It wasn't bad. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. That's all that I can ask for. So that's it for the Pick Your Poison round. Uh, coming up in a little while, we're gonna do the main course, and the main course is also something that's very special and something that you've never had before. Is this really ill? That's what I was really thinking. It would be just like somebody like the large dude to put some shit down, saying it's one thing, and it's not that. Curtis, I oh. a confession to make. That was, uh, so that was, that was camel tail. Thing is, it's so, I'm just going to send you. You're good. I would never do that to you. Too much respect. Enjoy. See? See, Sam? All right, so, Chef, we had said that we were going to make a little bit of fried chicken. We've actually done some fried chicken at Bistro. They did something called the Maryland fried chicken. What are we doing in your fried chicken that's a little different? All right, so we've been wanting to make a really good smoked fried chicken for a long time. This is our smoked chicken, and we also been calling it burnt chicken just for fun. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, welcome on back to Beats and Eats. We're at Duck's Eatery with Chef Will Harwitz, with my best friend, Willie Colon, Aha! and with me, the resident alcoholic and kind of food expert. We're going right to the main course. The main course is what looks like absolutely terribly burnt chicken. I've had a lot of fried chicken in my day, and uh, it looked like a burnt hamburger. So this is chicken? It's brined and it's smoked, as you would any chicken. After it comes out of the smoker and cools down, the brine and smoked chicken is rolled in a little bit of rice flour. It's wrapped in damp nori. You toss it into the deep fryer, crisp up that seaweed around it, right. and you come up with a nori wrapped smoked fried chicken that is served with a seaweed mayonnaise. You got it, yeah. House made pickles with a perfectly chiffonade basil, you can thank me, and a, uh, and a hipster cut lime. <laughs> and so that's what we have for you today. It looks like the chicken you would find in a mummy's casket. It does. It <laughs> seems like it's mummified. It yeah. seems like it's, it doesn't play well to the eyes, but I'm expecting big things on the palate. In the kitchen, I thought that it was something that had gone bad or something that was going to be thrown out. So it does have that shock value through it. But once you can get past that, and as long as you like seaweed, people who eat sushi and all that kind of stuff, it's a little bit of a best of both worlds. So, I mean, just before we dig into this, if it's okay, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of the lime. A little lime. A little bit of lime. You gotta admit, Willie, this does, it looks very interesting. It, it does. For me, I'm a fan of uh, the ingredients. Um, it's just the optics. The best way, just dive right in. Okay. Just pick that up and just give it a bite. Oh, man. Where do I bite? It's like a goddamn hockey puck, Mark. <laughs> I hear you, my friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so we got the smoke going. I imagine this is how they make chicken in Thailand. Like it's Something like that. Something has an Asian feel. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's great. Well, Chef, during this time, we like to ask every chef that we have on the show eight questions that will make you say is enough. All right? Ready? What's one sound that makes you cringe? I'm a chalkboard guy, all the way. Some people thrive in it, I can't do it. What is better than an organ? There was a, a lot of weird drugs back in <laughs> back in my 20s that okay. took me through a loop, but I'm gonna still, still stick to the organ. If you were in a kitchen and you wanted somebody to make you a birthday cake naked, who would it be? What's the girl from uh, Married with Children, the daughter? Peggy Bundy? Christina. No, 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 no. That was back in the day. What's one thing you would love to yell in public? I don't know, man. I used to, I went through like a trip where I got real weird, like kind of like a, 
a men's bathroom type of thing, just calling people out. Like, that was my childhood of getting in trouble, <laughs> was just making people feel as uncomfortable as possible. What's one food you could eat every day? Ah, uh, sushi. Sp really? Specifically, like, gas station sushi. Oh, nice, station yeah, sushi. That's my thing. So then, like, good old, you know, the diesel, regular, extreme yeah. sushi. What's one thing you regret you did last week? Shit, I finally did my taxes. Oh, you regret that? Oh, yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> causes me a constant fear. What's your biggest accomplishment? Right here, man. This is it. This whole thing? Top? This is it. This tops it off. There you go. <laughs> there you go. When you meet somebody for the first time, what's the first thing you notice on them? The first thing I notice on them, I, I would say, um, I don't know. I would say nose. I'm kind of like a nose guy. It's a weird nose. thing. What about like a woman? Small, first thing you know, same thing. So a big nose is a turtle. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I'm just putting words in. I'm just trying, to, <laughs> just trying to figure it out. That is, it is enough. I like the chicken. You like the chicken? It's a lot of flavors hitting you at once. It's a lot. Of it's a lot. Yeah, um, it's a but it works. And that's it, everybody. We're here at Duck's Eatery. We had a great time. Thank you to Curtis Cook. Thank you to Chef Will Horowitz for laying the smack down on this whole spread, if you will. Large, you had a good time? I had a really good time. I hope you liked what you ate. I had a great time. I tested my limits. I feel great. Hopefully, I don't regret it in the morning. Until next time, beats and eats.